uh, you know, this month in our Sunday service teachings, we are looking at wisdom for the saved. You know, that's what we'll be looking at. Now, and in the second service today, we'll be talking about the gift of righteousness that Christ gave us. How he intends for us to maintain it. Praise the Lord. Now, but today we are looking at five important rules for ministers. Now, those of you are behind the uh, machines, please check your volume on, online. You know, yesterday I was preaching and a minister was watching from a kire and he was uh, typing it. Please, no sound, no sound, no sound, no, no sound. It was Brother Precious that had to see it. He was at work. So he saw it and called those of us, those of the people at the, at the uh, media uh, uh, department to quickly check the sound. That was when it was discovered that all the opening prayer, the praise worship, there was no sound. Even when I started preaching, there was no sound. So please, always check these things. Get your phone, the one that you use, get one for monitor. Put it by your side. Connect and see what people online are saying. At times, some people call, you know, some people send message that the sound is not neat enough. So pay attention to what they are saying because the essence of communication is understanding. Any communication that does not uh, pass the message of understanding is useless. Stop him, brother. He has eaten already. Stop him. Take it from him. So any communication that cannot pass uh, uh, understanding has failed. So let's look at it this morning. These five rules are very important. Let's start with Acts of Apostles chapter 20 and verse 28. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. After which we'll look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16. Acts 20, 28, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Let's read together after the count of three. I think it's our first Bible reading. Let's be on our feet in honor of God's word as we read Acts 20, 28 together. After the count of three, one, two, and let's go three. Take heed, therefore, unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his blood. Take heed, therefore, unto thyself. Now be seated. Let's take the second scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16. I read, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that he had. If you look at this second one, you will see that both the minister and the one that are, are being ministered to needs to be saved. Listen. There is no excellence of doing ministry if after doing ministry you end up in hell. Are you hearing me? Don't bother to do ministry if doing ministry will land you in hellfire. There is no special place that you will get to in heaven if you don't pass the salvation test. That's why ministry assignment is not important. It's not. It should not be rated above your salvation. Am I communicating? So let's pay attention to these five rules. Now, what is rule number one? Take heed unto yourself. Take heed unto yourself. Every minister should understand you are more important than your assignment. You are more important than your assignment, which means that your assignment is not as important as you are. You are more important, I will explain, you are more important than your assignment. Listen, you are more important than the people you are sent to. That's why as a minister, your first point of call is to take heed unto yourself. If you have not ministered to yourself, you cannot minister effectively to anyone. That's why if you are not feeding yourself to grow spiritually, Hear me, you will fail in ministry. A lot of ministers think that ministry is all about you reading the Bible in order to preach to others. That's not what ministry is. I'll come again. A lot of ministers think like that. 
So anytime you see that uh, maybe they are senior pastor or they have a, an invitation to minister somewhere, maybe the senior pastor said, okay, for instance, Brother Gabriel, you'll be ministering on Wednesday. You will see that they will begin to gather their Bibles, gather their Bibles, gather the, their notebooks to try to study. That's a clear example of failure in ministry. It means that you have neglected yourself. Every single time I, I receive a ministration, every church I've ministered, I come again, every church I've ministered in my life, once they call me to say, Pastor Prince Will, uh, we just want to tell to ask you if so and so date is free, I'll say, give me like five minutes. Now, once I drop the call, I'll check my phone, my calendar, see whether it clashes with any of my programs. If it does not clash, I will call them back instantly. Okay, that day is free. Okay, pastor, we are inviting you to preach in our convention and the theme of the convention is so, so, and so. Do you know that instantly I drop the call? The Holy Spirit will begin to speak to me from the well of the word of God that I've stored up in my spirit. Ask my wife. I will not be telling her, you know, if I'm on the road, I just need paper. The Holy Spirit is telling me something. I just need paper and pen. That's why there's always paper and pen around me. If you get to my car, you'll see paper and pen. Get to my office, paper and pen. Where I sit, paper and pen. Go to my bag here, you'll see different kind of paper and pen. Because ministry should be like this. Out of the abundance of the heart is when the mouth should flow. That's why in my own uh, 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 ideology, I believe that ministry should be like the breastfeeding method. You see that whatsoever the mother eats is what the children will suck. I remember when our uh, 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 children were very small. You know, uh, one of them was tooling. And when the elders came around to ask my wife, they asked her, did she take orange? She said, yes, she took orange. And she took it a lot. They said that's the thing. That whatsoever you take, you see that the child will suck. That's how ministry is supposed to be. I wrote here, and I want you to follow me so well. Hear me. Hear me. Grow yourself first before you think of growing any other person. Grow yourself first. Feed yourself first before you begin to feed other people. You cannot give what you do not have. Every leader, hear me. You can't give what you don't have. That's why ministry is not about going to preach to others. In Ekolunje ministry, you can't bring people into an experience that you don't have. You can't bring people into a work with God that you don't have. That's why every minister, hear me. You need to work on yourself. The first point of call is take it unto yourself. Unto yourself. Unto yourself. If I came to church this morning, I've spent, I woke up very early, I've spent time like one hour to pray, not praying for you now. I have prayed concerning my life, I've prayed concerning my family, I've prayed concerning my ministry, then I have prayed concerning today's service. Ever before thinking of every other thing, I consider myself first. I wrote here, stop studying to preach, start studying to grow. Stop studying to preach, Start studying to grow. Stop studying to preach. Start studying to grow. Stop studying to preach. Start studying to grow. Stop looking for an opportunity to preach. Can I tell you this truth? If you are overfed, nobody will force you to vomit. Nobody will force you to throw up. Do you see anybody struggling to throw up? You want to throw up. You know what people do when you see people that, are, that is trying to throw up? They try to stop him. Okay, let us put lime in his mouth to see whether it will stop. If he wants to throw up, you will see that the thing will come from what? From within. Ah, oh, you just bring it out. Take it unto yourself. I wrote here, devise a Bible study plan for yourself as a minister. Devise a Bible study plan for yourself as a minister. Devise it. Structure it. How do you intend to study your Bible? Don't be a kind of a minister that you come to church on Sunday, you leave your church, your Bible in the church on Sunday, and you come next week Sunday again to just preach it because you're only, I'd say, this, this is my Bible. 
Bible is not part of something you use as your part of your dress to balance your dress. No. It's your spiritual food. I have Bible in my office. I have Bible at home. I have Bible, I have Bible every In fact, I was telling myself this morning when I was studying, I said, ah, it's like I'm getting too close to my phone. So in my place of prayer, I told myself, this one week, after I finish my broadcast and send all I need to send online, I will discipline myself one week fast. Not fasting of food now, fasting of my phone. That I want to increase my time to, of study. That it's like this thing is taking some time from me. I want to increase my study time. That's how you should be, sir. Now, pay attention to this next thing I want to say, beloved. If you do not take heed to yourself, hear me, ignorance and demons will disgrace you in public. I come again. If you do not take heed to yourself, ignorance and demons will disgrace you in public. Now, let me tell you this brief story. I was invited to preach uh, in a fellowship of uh, students. Uh, that's a uh, federal uh, government college students all over Nigeria. They gather themselves, you know, federal government from different states. They gather themselves in a camp at Ife. And one brother told them about me, so they invited me for three days. They tried to make me sleep in their camp. I said, no, I would have to be coming and be going. Ife is not far to Ibadan. So I was coming and going. Do you now know that on the third day of the ministration, I finished preaching what I had prepared. Then, you know students now, they now say, sir, one of the leader says, sir, these students said they have questions they want to ask that they are confused about. I said, okay, bring it on. Thinking that it will be usual questions. Beloved, they started talking on doctrinal issues. Questions that will make me to show them verses. Thank God that I had studied. Thank God that I had a lifestyle of study. So when they ask, I'll say, you know what, thank God we have a screen here. Put so and so scripture on screen. Let everybody see. Let's read together and let me answer your question. That one will be cleared. Another one we ask. I'll say, put so and so thing on screen. Let's read together. They'll read. You know, I, I was answering questions for like one hour. I now told my, I know, I didn't tell myself. As we were coming, coming out, they confirmed me. Adebanjo was part of the team of men that followed me. He said, Papa, I said, what's it? He said, thank God that you know scripture. That what if you didn't know scripture? You didn't prepare. And all these questions came. What will have happened? I said I will have disgraced myself. Ignorance will always disgrace the unlearned. Where? In public. Can you imagine? Somebody just come around and say, okay, are you, you are a minister in God's evangelical? Yeah, 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 I'm a minister. Please, ma, I'm confused. What is the difference in between the righteousness of Christ, sanctification, and holiness? What will you say? Uh, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'll come back to you. No, man. I thought they said you are a minister. Now, this is why we study. To grow. When we are growing, it will be easy for us to minister to others. That's why I started by letting you know that you are more important than the assignment. Now, I also said, if you, if you don't study, demons will also disgrace you in public. Now, look at the case that happened in your house. The lady that was manifesting. She he said, thank God that you have been taught here. The lady, was a Muslim, was manifesting demon. The demon inside of her was speaking in the house. Not in church, oh. Take heed unto yourself. I wrote here, study to enrich your mind. Create time to build a great prayer life. Study to enrich your mind. Create time to build a great prayer life. You know, I read my own Bible. 
I don't just read that I wake up in the morning, I read Acts chapter 1. I have done all those ones when I was a baby Christian. You know I do my own study now? I do topical issues. If I want to study righteousness, I will look for scriptures, all the scriptures that I need to know. If I want to study sanctification, I will look for all the scriptures that I together to study from here, study from here, study from here, study from here, until I am satisfied, until I have enough knowledge of it. I'm preparing a handout. I want to use it for you, the ministers. You will join the Bible school uh, as students maybe next week or the upper week when we get to that particular subject. I want to teach you on giving. So I was making research. Do you know that I discovered that from Genesis, giving has always been part of worship to God. Right from Genesis chapter 1, God has always responded positively to giving from man. Study, study, study. Can I tell you another reason why you need to study? Look up. Psalm 75 verse 6 shows us something. I want to show you why. another reason why you need to study. Show us. Psalm 75 and verse 6. While they are coming, I will tell you what is there. That promotion cometh not from the east nor from the west. Psalm 75 verse 6. I want them to say it. For promotion cometh neither from where? The east nor from the west nor from the south. Next verse. Next verse. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Do you know what I discovered here? God promotes based on what you have to offer. Ah, Ulua, Lord, lift me to the realm of mercy. Chingu. If you don't have what to offer, God will not give you opportunity. In fact, it's part of my meeting with the choir this morning. Our young coming up that led praise at the Shiloh yesterday. I don't want to mention any, you know, we're online. Now, I, one of the things I want to tell them, when, when you want to sing, the first thing you must ascertain, who are the instrumentalists on ground? Or else they'll mess you up. You started well because there was, you, you didn't notice, I don't know whether you noticed, there was no kick for the drum set. The keyboardist that was playing for you yesterday was not as good as you expect, as you want to sing. You started well with worship. You will have stayed with worship. I was giving you, remain where you are. The keyboardist is good with worship. That's what I should. The drum man that was playing with drums, there is no kick in the drum set. Worship will still cover you. You were doing well. But when you just ended it and started praise, I was saying, that, hey, I was calling you, giving you sign. Go back to, you will just mess yourself up. And people will not say you are not the one that could say that, that is singing well. I, 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 am, am I communicating? These are things you do. Now, what if you now have a bigger stage like that? You don't just follow the notes that you say, okay, you know, that's why I said, take it to yourself. For instance, you have instrumentalists that all they can play is war up, war up it. And you got this, I've prepared from home, I'm coming to play high life. That's what I will sing. They will mess you up. Take heed unto thyself. God promotes based on what you have to offer. Let me summarize this number one point. Never cease to work on improving yourself. 
self-improvement must be continuous don't ever get to a point in your life that you think you don't need to improve again pastor prince will your senior pastor is still studying Yesterday I was listening to Pastor Adeboe. He was talking about the elders. Talking about the younger generation. How the younger generation should learn from elders. I pick something. At times when I listen to servants of God. Listen. I, when I, I listen to pick something. Don't ever get to a point you now feel it. There's nothing. So the only time you carry your Bible. Is when they tell you that you are going to be sharing for 15 minutes. You say okay. I'll be sharing for 15 minutes. Ah, I'll be sharing for 15 minutes. Sir, if you tell me now that I will preach for three hours, you just give me the topic. Holy Spirit, am I the one you want to use? Once he says yes, I begin to connect with the scriptures that I have in my spirit. Take heed to yourself. Let me tell your neighbor, take heed to yourself. Those of you two that are in the song ministry, take heed to yourself. Our instrumentalist, take heed to yourself. You keep improving. Don't stop where you are. Number two. Number two. Take heed unto your family. After yourself, sir, the next thing is your family. After yourself, your family, not even your assignment. It is when you are not yet married, you now say assignment will come above family. But when you are married, after yourself is your family. Sir, my mentor used to tell us, he said for every minister, your family is your airport. You cannot stay on air forever. If you don't put your effort, your airport right, your airport will frustrate you and you have no ministry to, to fulfill. Now, what does the scripture say about family? First Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 4. Then we'll look at Genesis 18, 17 to 19. First Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 4. Thank you. He said, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop. Now, the bishop here does not mean the title that people bear now. A bishop is a person in charge. For instance, our head usher is a bishop of the ushers. Our evangelism coordinator is a bishop of the evangelism department. Now, what do we call Brother Tuji at the technical department? That's the bishop of the technical department. What do we call Brother Precious in the media? That's the bishop of the media. So whoever desires to be an overseer, he desires a good work. It's not a calling. He desires a good work. He wants to be in charge. Move on, move on. But look at the, the qualification. He needs to put some things right. A bishop must be blameless. The husband of what? One wife. Vigilant. Sober. Of good behavior. Given to hospitality, apt to teach, that's able to teach. Verse 3, fast. Not giving to wine, no striker, not greedy for filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Verse 4 is where we are now going. One that ruleth well, his what? His own house. That ruleth well, which means that his house should be the place where he should practice his ministry. Is he a good minister? Come to his house, you will know. Take one more scripture. Genesis chapter 18, 17 to 19. Speaking about Abraham here. Now, and the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that that thing which I do? Move on. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Then verse 19 is where we are really going. For I know him that he will what? He will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. Now God was proud enough to say, I know Abraham. I know Abraham. 
If you are a minister in church, you cannot minister to your family. You are failed though. Hello? I come again. If you are a minister in church and you cannot minister to your family, your first place of assignment is in your family. Your family. Your family. So many ministers are not getting it right. They leave their families behind in their pursuit of ministry. And I wrote here, the family you leave behind will make you reverse eventually. Maybe you did not know. Baba Kumui's son was a drug addict. Jerry is his name. He got born again some years ago as an adult. And he was telling us how he was smoking. He just got born again. It was one of the district overseers that preached to him. Why? When all of them accepted the call, you know, the zeal of the call swept them. And all of them started running. Yes, umbo, yes, umbo. And when you, ah, 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 the souls are dying, souls are perishing. They were after the souls, forgetting that their family should be the first. The gospel that does not work in your family, Mama Dejuma will say, don't bother exporting it. It doesn't work in your family. Where do, who will buy it from you? I was also listening to Archbishop Duncan Williams. You know what Archbishop said? He said, when I just received the call, the zeal and the passion of the call drove me to begin to preach all around. Because I didn't want to be a burden to anybody. I was preaching all around and I became an absentee father. He said, I was not there to raise my children. I was just sending the money sending all they needed money to do. He said, I was not there. He said, so by the time I had returned, I returned, the devil had taken hold of my children. Do you know that he was preaching in a crusade? His son was organizing a disco party in another program. I was telling people, my dad, don't mind my daddy. His son was doing live video and was pumping champagne and was pouring beer around. And people said, that is Archbishop Duncan. But the man of God came up, he said, I was an, as, an absentee father. He said, but now I realize. Now that's why I'm telling you, number, rule number one for ministers is take it unto yourself. I've told you that. Rule number two for ministers is take heed unto your family. Now those of you that are young, hear me, you are not yet engaged, you are not yet married, you know that you are going to come into ministry, Ah, you have to pray very well. You know why you should pray very well? You must be watchful in the kind of person you choose. If the person does not agree that you have a call to ministry and you are going to serve in the way you have decided to serve according to the calling you have, stop that relationship on the line. You know why ministry is easy for me? I got it right. At the, at the point of choosing a partner, I got it right. I told my wife my calling. She asked, in fact, God revealed to her many things about me. In our courtship days, I told her the way I serve. I told her my mentor. Listen, take heed unto your family. God put you by she share from from family. Ma will a brother who fell on ta kuni walk. God was proud of Abraham. He said to Abraham, for I know my father that led me to, to Jesus, the man of God that preached to me. I always talk about him, Pastor Chinedu Suju, we were on phone some days ago. And he was telling me, he said, Prince Will, I said, sir, he said, he's blessed with about three children, four children. He said, do you know, I was in my family Bible study. I was, my children were asking me some questions about God. I now explained to them in fact, you know, he told me some things. I was happy. I said, sir, you have taught us. It will not be difficult for you to teach your own children. Where is your family? In your pursuit for ministry.
You know, I prepared this message. It's not now I prepare it. Come and see my note. As one of us were com was coming with his family on his bike, I was looking at them. And I said to myself, he's getting it right. Don't leave your family behind. Yes, listen, it will be slow if you are moving with your family. But you won't regret in the future. But it will be fast if you leave them behind. But you will see reverse later. That's why until you are a minister at home, you cannot succeed to be a minister anywhere. Let's go on. Let's go on. You must see your family as your first church. In bracket, place of assignment. You must see your family as your first church. In bracket, place of assignment. It is your practical feed, field to demonstrate all you believe in. Your family is your practical field to demonstrate all that you believe in. Okay, if you say, Pastor, I believe in miracles. Perform miracles in your family. When your children are sick, pray for them. Oh, Pastor, I believe in healing. I had Mommy Adelakun said that. Mommy said, in those days, when she was nursing her children, she used her children to practice her healing ministry. That when they are sick, she prays for them. Ask my wife. When my wife is strong, if she says she's strong, I'll say, bring your hands. At times, she wake me in the night. I don't like how I'm feeling. I'll lay my hands on her. Do you know that there was a time to meet her I was strong? She laid her hands on me to pray for me. That's what she saw that I was doing for her. She did it for me. How can you care for the flock? You cannot care for your own family. You cannot say, okay, let, I'll, I'll pray for my wife. But if somebody outside call you, you don't, you don't disappear. You are fake. Can I go on? You believe in deliverance? Deliver your family. You believe in patience? Sir? You have got on this to be patient with your family too. As my daughter was walking into church, I was preparing another Bible study that we have with her after service. That you just want to remain a late comer. That by the time we get after service, I will still sit her down. To still talk with her. Because if I cannot convert her, I'm wasting my time with you. Let me tell your neighbor, take it to your family. You know, there are some things you, did, you can't choose by yourself. You, you chose your wife, but you did, did you choose your children? You chose your husband, or you didn't choose your children. Let's get it right. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. The Lord will honor you. Hmm? It is well with you. He's paying a lot of sacrifice to be here. The Lord bless you. Emma, mama, me wa lo jupe she go papa komo yi mi abi. Praise the Lord. Now, look at Philip the Evangelist. You know, we all read his story in Acts of Apostles. He had that many daughters. Four. The four of them were prophetess. No wonder Philip was able to win a whole city. The whole city of Samaria got born again through one man. Why? Everything he was doing outside, he had demonstrated it in his family. Eh, ma sorry, I did tell only go where the pastor is fake in there. Your first point of assignment is where? Your family. If you cannot win your family to come to the Lord with you, if you cannot show love to your family to now accept the gospel you have in your hands, you are only faking it then.
That's why you see my youngest son, he always wants to follow me. Daddy, daddy, let's go together. And I saw that since he has this passion, he wants to be following me very early, to leave home very early. I said, okay, no problem. I will prepare you. We'll be coming together. Why are we quiet today? Let's summarize this one. Beloved, if you cannot win your family, how can you win the world? If you cannot win your family, how can you win the world? Now, do you also know that, look up, your family is not just your brothers, um, not just your father and mother, um, not just your wife or your husband or children, even your brothers. There's this family, we are, we are five that my mother gave birth to. We do every Saturday online prayers. They are scattered all over the world. So we do it on WhatsApp. I preach and I lead prayers. We now got to a point that I said, okay, let's share, let's share it. Let's every Saturday you pick this. This uh, let's give this one to Kingsley. Let's give this one to Andrea. Let they believe in my gospel. Tell your neighbor, take it on to your family. Look at the ministry of Jesus. How many of you know that Jesus' mother was there at the upper room? I showed you, was it not last week? After Jesus had ascended, his mother was in church. How many of you know that James, the book of James, was written by the brother of Jesus, stepbrother? His brother wrote the book of James. Take it on to your family. Nobody is perfect. Number three, third instruction. Can I go on? Number, take heed unto your gifts. There are certain gifts that God has invested in you. Don't forget number one, take it to your, unto yourself. Number two, take it unto your family. Number three, take heed unto your gifts. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. First Timothy 4, 14. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. First Timothy 4, 14. Second Timothy 1, 6. Look at this. It says, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given by what? Prophecy. With the laying on of the hands of the prayer pastry. Now, the gift that is in thee. 2 Timothy 1.6 2 Timothy 1.6 Wherefore I put thee I put thee in remembrance that thou stare of what? The gift of God which is in thee, by the what? By the putting on of my hands. Now, this was Paul speaking to Timothy, his son, twice. Listen, any gift that God has given you that you have not discovered, you cannot use it. And one thing with spiritual gift is, if you are not using it, it will be dying. Until it will end. So as a minister, as a leader, what should you do? Why not take time, sit yourself down, prayerfully find out the gifts that you have. So that you can develop them and engage them. I always, tell, I always, I always notice this about myself. God used to show me things very well in my dreams. Was it not four weeks ago? 
I, w I was in a dream. I saw that fuel became, I, I saw a machine. Somebody was sending fuel and it was 558 naira. I said, nothing goes down in Nigeria. Anything that goes up in Nigeria keep going up or stay up. So I kept quiet about it. Two weeks after, NNPC started selling fuel for 585. All NNPC stations. 585. Two weeks ago. I was shocked. I saw this thing in my dream. I saw this thing in my dream. Now, this one is just small. There are several things God used to show me. And God used to tell me, he says, son, one thing about you that you need to work on is that you don't used to be bold enough to announce what I show you. Before things happen, I used to see it. But one thing with me is I don't talk. If it's negative, I'll begin to pray about it. If it's positive, I'll begin to claim it to happen. So when people come to share testimony, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, so so and so thing happen. At times I used to tell my wife beside me and I saw this thing. Up. I discovered too that I have the ability to write. It's a gift. If you give me pen, Kai, Maybe if the pen finish, or maybe somebody come to intercept, interrupt me. Have you discovered your gift? Some of you, you have a, the ability to compose song. It's a gift. But any gift you don't discover, that's one. Any gift you discover that you don't develop, two. Any gift you discover, develop, and don't engage, three, will die. Have you discovered your giftings? You know, something happened this morning. I was inside the office. I was getting my dress ready for service. We came very early. And Uriola came very early. So, he went to the keyboard. I was inside. I was now saying where I was getting my dress ready. Ah, this boy and music. Now will see how I can channel, remove that, that interest that he has in music and channel it more in his academics. I was just talking to myself. And instantly I just heard ta 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 Da, 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 da. God is my witness. I was inside the office. He was at the keyboard. I said, Lord, are you the one speaking or is this a coincidence? I got the message. to your gift. I love the man with the five. He faced his gift. The man with the two faced his gift. The man with the one did not like his gift. This morning I was still praying in church. This message had been prepared since yesterday. I was praying in, uh, at home. You know, my normal prayer the needs that we have in our ministry. So I was saying, Lord, I trust you for an Epaphrat. Epaphrat is an intercessor. Epaphrat that will not bother about the pulpit, whose assignment will be to organize for us strong prayer on behalf of the church. Lord, I call in, oh God, for the Apollos. Apollos is, oh God. Apollos is that are not planters. Apollos are those that waters. They are those that will come and ask. You know, I was calling for the people I, we need in our ministry.
some of you that I'm praying about are already here. But you are not paying attention to your gift. Some of you are not even developing your gift. Some of you are fighting over other people's gifts. I wrote here, beloved, if you do not pay attention to yourself, how will you know the gift you have? Moses and Israel were stalked before, before the Red Sea until God asked him to stretch the rod. Let me summarize this number three. Pay attention to yourself to discover, develop, and engage your gift. If we all discover, develop, and engage our gift, we don't need to be fighting over anything. And to the ministry of prayer, you will see that he will stay with the ministry of prayer. And it's your own way for the ministry of soul winning you will see that they will stay with soul winning. The one that God called to the ministry of follow-up will stay there. The one that God called to music, you will see that everybody will stay. So take it unto that gift. Let's take number four. After your gift, listen, take heed unto your assignment. Minister, what are you called to do? It's a question you must answer. Touch him for me. Please be here. The calling of Aaron was to be what? Moses' mouthpiece. Moses, tell me whatever God is telling you. I will tell Herod, uh, Pharaoh. You know, I, I gave you one assignment two months ago, but you didn't come back to give me answer. That go and pray. Why are you in God's power evangelical mission? Why did God bring you here? You know, a lot of you laughed about it. What is the assignment committed to your hands? Take it onto your assignment. How will you do the assignment you didn't even know? One of the people that just joined our church came to see me. She's looking at me. I don't want to look at that direction. Sir, you not be shy. Sir, I want to join the drama department, but I see that the drama team of this church is not effective. I belong to a drama group, sir, somewhere. I said, don't worry. Their leader is, is not around. When he's around, I will connect him to. Do you know that your unseriousness can lead some people away? Some of you don't know. That you can use your unseriousness to discourage others. And you know what the Bible says? It said, he that makes a little one to fall, it is better that a stone be tied to his feet and be dumped into the sea. So what's your assignment? Number one, take it onto yourself. Number two, take it onto your family. Number three, take it onto your gifts. Number three, take it onto your assignment. Now, assignments can be committed in two forms. It could be God directly. It, be, it could be God using his servant. If it is God that spoke it to you directly, or God used his servant to give you the assignment, take it to it. Put your energy to it. Get 
the best out of it. And see how God will reward you. Let's take the last one because of my time. Lastly, fake heed unto the people placed around your life, family, and ministry by God. Take heed unto the people placed around your life, family, and ministry by God. Permit me to say this. I wrote it down this way. Relationship is a gift. Sorry. Relationship is God's gift for man to enjoy speed. Relationship is God's gift for man to enjoy speed. Esma, Esma, take heed unto the people that God placed around your life. Take your time to find out why. Why are these people around me? Now listen. People are struggling today because they mismanage people. I'm telling you, people struggle today because they are mismanaging people. But when you see people around you, these are the questions you must ask. Number one, are they friends whose iron will sharpen my iron as my iron also sharpens theirs? Two, you ask, are they superiors who should teach you the dynamics you need to know? Three, are they protégés that God placed around you to learn from you? Now, if they are superiors, if they are friends, if they are protégés, there are three important rules for relationship. Number one, appreciate people. Don't treat them as less important. I come again. Appreciate people. Don't treat them as that any. No matter who they are, don't treat them as less important. You know, once there's one funny thing that used to happen. Once we drive into our estate on Sunday after service, you will see all the securities men in all in our estate. All the all of them, they'll be following our cars. We are coming. Pastor is back. Pastor is back. Ah, they will come and open the gate. Pastor, you are welcome, sir. You are welcome, sir. Mommy, you are welcome, sir. Emma, you are welcome, ma. So me too. I used to prepare for them. They're about eight or nine. I used to prepare. At times, I'll give them drinks. At times, I'll, I'll give them five, five hundred now. Just, oh, hey, how are you? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You just see that once we, we at times, we wake up Saturday morning. The one that has cutlass has cutlass. The one that has hoe has hoe. They are raking, clearing glass. Sweeping gutters. People are important. Nobody will stay around anybody that does not appreciate their worth. Number two, respect people. Because honor gives back to honor. Stop all these stupid things that people do. How old are you? You just look at her. Okay, as Mrs. Ogunya is walking, I suspect she should be around 22. And me, I'm going to be 50. The next thing you look at her, hear me. Respect people. Even if you are above people. We used to say my tribe, or what dear, dear, only can around fair. And lastly, don't do what you won't want them to do to you. These are the five principles 
important instructions that every leader must run with. That's why, listen, I'm summarizing. Structure your day in such a way that you must have finished talking with God, with your family, before you speak to any other person outside. Are you hearing me? Structure your day in such a way. What you call on sorrow. To bat she talk with your own family and the nest. Ki she kwe uti bolor on sorrow. Uti bota. Ya lai de, ya lai de. Ekele, eku unu ano, ekele. Eye uti uti to. Oh, plan to fill two hours. Want to waste the time when. Maybe your wife is not calling you. Daddy, like what you about for morning prayer. Daddy, she know either. Hey, mumba, 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 mumba. Move it. I'm sorry, I can't talk to you. La no, ah ah. Structure your day in such a way that one, your your first time of the day with God. Two, spend time with your family, and make sure you do all these things in such a way that it will not affect your work. Don't say now, Pastor, I've taught us to structure our time. Mama, lo late si biche. To ban be me gone, she said to back by the to ban the family prayer. You could pay the Structure yourself. You have all the time. Maja ko affect you share. So take it unto yourself. Let's take let's run through it one after the other. Number one is what? Take it unto thyself. Number two. Unto your family. Number three. Number four. I didn't hear you. And number five. God bless you. Rise upon your feet if you are blessed. I hope there is nobody that will not be staying for the second service. Is anybody like that? So I can. Today's anointing service. Where is your husband? Okay. You sent him to a level again. I thought Bolu is at a level. And we need to have meeting here. All the choir. I want to see them today. Maybe you give him a call. Hmm? After second service, we have a very important meeting. And please make sure you pass your messages well. So that uh, I know they want to say, if maybe they, uh, maybe he wants to base on the base in the level church. You don't know. <laughs> okay. If you want to base them, we can fix them there. A level people are looking for permanent uh, trauma. But please give him a call. We have a meeting here today. Hmm? Very important. Even you yourself must be in that meeting. Father, we thank you for what you've done again today. Take all the glory and all the praise forever in Jesus' name. Today is the first Sunday. We ask for grace to enjoy this fourth month of the year. You have given us as a month of praise, the season of praise. Events, glorious events that will make us praise you all through will continue to occur in our lives in Jesus' name. As I anoint your children this new month, I call for the season of praise in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Let it manifest, O God. As you go, may the grace of God open doors for you. May lines fall unto you in pleasant places. May you move from one level of glory to another in Jesus' name. You will not be stagnated. It is well with you. In Jesus' name I pray. And amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. Then after the grace, those of you that will not be